what's going on everyone so the bulls are back we had the fed meeting today we had the you know to be expected 0.25 uh rate hike and the markets absolutely exploded we had our old buddy jerome powell come on meet with his crew they came out and then you know they, they sent the market right are we back are the bulls back that is the main question here there's a couple of things that i want to look at starting with the uh s p 500 i want to look at the triple q's i want to give a quick look to the vix really fast and kind of see what exactly is going on and then i'm going to do our market research for tomorrow and look at the top tech stocks that i like to personally trade on a day in and day out basis so with that being said let's kind of go ahead and get into the video here i, I just you know very excited okay to say the least I, I think that you know we could all say that this was a much needed rally for a lot of us right a lot of bulls have been feeling a lot of pain for a very very long time and you know we've been on a tremendous run realistically since like the first week you know starting that middle week of january just the market has been pretty much unstoppable realistically without a downtick right we've had about two or three red days and other than that everything has just been very very crimson and clover so with that let's go ahead and dive into the charts here and kind of see exactly what i'm looking at what i'm looking at here is the triple q's and this is the daily time frame guys if you can kind of just see this here as i kind of i'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can get a little bit closer here and see exactly what's going on so this is actually the first week not only that we closed over the 200 day moving average but that we're now starting to build over the 200 day moving average the 200 sma is a very very big deal we lost the 200 SMA over a year ago and have yet to reclaim it until this past uh, week, right? So if we really look at it, right, we've been in a tremendous amount of pain for over a year. We've gotten very, very close to confirming uh, the 200 day moving average before we got pretty close here in the end of November and December. We got very, very close here in August. And if I kind of go back in time here, take a little uh, time travel machine. If I can just go back here to this time here, this really faked a lot of people out. This is going back to March of 2022. I know this because myself and, and other members and students in the Discord uh, community that I kind of run over there at evolutiontraders.com, a lot of people were thinking we were going long, that that was going to be the end. We didn't really know we were going to be in a bear market for extended periods of time. We were actually looking at that breakout, and then lo and behold, it was one, two days later where the market drastically kind of pulled in. So this is a very, very big deal here. We could be on the rise. Um, there's a lot of open air space here on the daily chart. So if we kind of look at the daily chart and we take today's highs of 303.39, there's a tremendous amount of room. The next little major stop that we're gonna have is around 311.310, okay? That would be the next landing spot. I could see the bulls pushing in there before a significant back test. Now, even if we get a back test, it doesn't necessarily mean that the market is going all the way back down. As of right now, the bulls are in full control. Even if, guys, we have a significant red day or a red week, as long as the bulls remain over macro levels of supply and as long as we hold that 50-day SMA, we're good, guys. We're going higher and it is what it is. Now, the story and the narrative is going to highly change if we do lose the 50-day moving average. If something happens where the market kind of digests what happened today and we get through this tech earnings season, and the market does start to roll over and we lose a price point if i could just kind of blow this up so i could see if we lose a price point of 280 dollars on the triple q's which is a nasdaq 100 we will more than likely make another leg down but for as of right now we have to celebrate this win it feels very very good a lot of people are making money right now and that's what's good that's what gets people excited and gets people back into the market as of right now there's a lot of traders who have exited the market and have yet to return i'm still waiting for some of these guys to come back we're still here we've still been doing it let's go ahead and take a look at the s p 500 ticker symbol is going to be spy if we kind of look at the spy here from a macro overview we can see highs of 462 big drop down a little bit of a dead cap bounce rejected at the 50-day moving average second leg down a little bit of a recap here a little bit of a rebound bounce here where we had uh lasted you know between july all the way into august so about a month rally right before we kind of got rejected at the s p 500's 200-day moving average and put us in that nasty nasty downturn for another two three months here now we bottomed out here all the way back in october so 
whatever anyone wants to say, the market really, right, essentially bottomed out in October. So we've been slowly grinding. Has it been, you know, very, very sweet and green every day since October? Of course not, guys. But realistically, we are starting to now push higher. And when we got rejected here at this 200 day moving average the last time, which was in the end of November going into December, when we dropped from the end of November to December, when we dropped this time here, right? And I'm trying to highlight this so you guys can go on your charts and kind of take a look. As soon as we dropped from here and we did not make a new low, this was very, very bullish, okay? We just had to kind of sit back and allow the market to digest and do whatever it, it needed to do, right? And it was at this point here is where we put in our first higher low in over a year, right? A significant higher low, which means that, you know, it wasn't just for like a day or two. We actually try to hold and consolidate for a while here before we made this next push up. And right now we've been on a three, four week rally on in some tech names, you know, been on a longer rally. And if I can just get into some of the other tech names, like, uh, for example, if we look at Netflix, right? If we look at Netflix, Netflix is slowly grinding and it has been on its own bull run going all the way back to when we bottomed out here in uh, last year on May, May, June, right? Between May and June. If you look at this price action between May and June going into July, it was about three months time where we really just kind of consolidated and went sideways. There was not a whole lot of action going on on Netflix. It wasn't really doing much. We had that big drop off of earnings. We went sideways, but then realistically here, going into August, we kind of made that step stepping stone higher. We started to kind of walk the ladder up and then we went on another two, three month consolidation period. So if you look at this consolidation period that lasted a month, we had a little bit of a rally. We went on another two to three month consolidation period. And then when we got here going into November, we've just been going up, pulling back into support, making a new high, pulling back into support, making a new high, pulling back into support, and now just on a monster run. So if we kind of look at what's going on here with Netflix, and let me zoom this out so you guys can make sure and see that. If Netflix starts to take out this channel here, going back to the 26th, over 369.22, we've got room to push all the way into 378. That's gonna be your next macro trade. I am not too concerned on shorting Netflix for the short term, right, intraday shorts. Uh, until we close below 338. That's going to be my level that I'm looking at. Next stock we're going to be taking a look at is one of my favorite stocks I love to trade, and that's going to be Tesla. Tesla bottomed out at 101.81 all the way back here on the 6th of January, and it's been an absolute monster since then. So if we kind of look at what Tesla has done this past month, we ran right into supply. Now, again, I need to really emphasize this, especially for the newer traders and investors out there. It does not mean that if we do decide to pull back, right? Let me pull out my drawing tool here for just a quick second. As we're into this supply, if we do decide to pull back, it doesn't mean that everything is over, okay? For me, and should be for you as well, seasoned traders, new traders, you guys need to get familiar with the technicals of this. As long as Tesla is trading over its 50 day moving average, which is here, we are still bullish, okay? We can come all the way back down here to a price of 140 to 150 and still be bullish. That would be 30 to 40 points down on Tesla and people may be thinking, well, I'm gonna lose all that money. Yeah, if you're buying at the top right now, what you need to do right now is wait for some type of little pullback on Tesla and then re-get in on that bounce, that confirmation of that that uh, demand zone is going to hold. Because if we do, then I could see a start to step in stone uh, all the way up here. Our next price target that I've got set up on Tesla is going to be 200, 205. And after 205, we're looking at 216 and 230. Those are going to be the price targets for the next six months for myself on Tesla. I'm going to be looking to uh, very, very actively trade Tesla. Uh, to the long side, I will get short biased as soon as we lose that 50 day moving average. But if that doesn't come, then I will continue to look for the upside there. We're gonna look at one of the stocks from the semiconductors. Well, actually, we'll look at two of them. We'll look at NVIDIA. I trade NVIDIA a little bit more than AMD, but AMD just had earnings kind of held the market up yesterday. So we're also gonna take a look at uh, AMD, right? So let me just zoom over this way. Phenomenal move here on NVIDIA, okay? So NVIDIA had this crazy run up all the way from the sixth you're going to start to notice that the narrative is kind of the same right on a lot of these stocks things kind of you know realistically in the beginning the first week of january kind of around the sixth seventh eighth they really started to explode if we kind of look at when nvidia really broke out 
it was right here on January 10th, the 11th. Um, we reconfirmed that 50 day moving average. We ran right up into this channel line here, which is the linear regression channel at 174. We had a very, very strong and healthy back test, which is was just a minor pullback for the next kind of ride up. And then we had another two day pullback. This is bullish price action. This is what a bear market or excuse me, what a bull market looks like. A bull market is going to be green, 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 green. Big pullback, big pullback into supply, green, 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 big pullback into supply, green, 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 versus what we've been experiencing is just red, 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 little bounce, little bounce, big red, big red, big red, right? So you can kind of start to identify these trends. These stocks are starting to turn a lot more bullish. Now, does that mean we're not going to have another leg down? I don't know that you don't know that we can all guess we can all speculate we can all have our own opinions but you know what they say about opinions everyone's got them they're like you know what right so what we're looking at here on nvidia is over 211.74 we will be looking for open skies i have to pull up the weekly chart here to kind of see exactly what our next macro kind of uh, supply zone is. I'm looking at a 220, 221 price target on the video within the next 30 to 60 days, which you know essentially could happen within the next week. But I just like to put a little bit of time on that because we could pull back. Our rising support is sitting at around 180. So again, that's around 20 points down. Doesn't necessarily, or 20, 23 points, 25, 30 points down. Doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, everything is over and the rally is over if we did decide to pull back for a month or a few weeks what it would be is actually healthy for the long term as day traders and as scalpers we get so fixated on the smaller time frames we constantly want things to go now and go now and go now but we have to kind of slow down and realize that the stock market is a long game okay so the stock market is a very long game right so as day traders and as scalpers we are playing the short-term game but on a very big playing field if that makes sense so that's nvidia we're going to take a look at the big uh the big dog google and then we'll take a look at apple um google here still has a little bit of work to do before we break out now what you actually want to do is stocks like nvidia they've already broken out if you've missed those trades allow them to pull back uh stocks like um Netflix has already broken out. Nvidia has already broken out. Doesn't mean that you can't trade them long, but just understand the farther extended away they get from their supports, the harder they're gonna come back down into their supports. The last thing you wanna do is kind of get trapped. What you wanna do is look for stocks that still have not quite broken out yet like those others, right? So if we kind of look at Google, Google really hasn't broken out like the others, right? So if we kind of look at 101.28 would be a level that I would be looking at seriously on Google. Our next uh, kind of supply zone that we could run into is 104, excuse me, 106 and 109. Those would be the two price targets that I would be looking at on Google, excuse me. So what we're gonna look at now is Apple, right? I'm gonna give us some levels on Apple. Apple, another one kind of running into all of this supply here. I would expect Apple maybe to go, you know, sideways for a week. That would be kind of nice if it just kind of consolidated here. I would really be looking for Apple to get over its uh, weekly 50 SMA, which is sitting at a price of around 150. If I kind of look here at what's going on with Apple's daily chart, uh, we're coming right into its 200 day moving average. So that price is sitting at around 147. Over 147, we've got room into 150 and over 150 is gonna officially break this downtrend on Apple. I would highly consider myself getting into a risk on position over 150 as soon as we can break this mega downtrend that, that realistically started when we gapped down going all the way back here uh, to August 26th you know, a long time ago, right? So if we kind of look at what, what we've got here, the last time we realistically traded over Apple, right? Uh, and kind of pull this up on your chart so you guys can see, but the last time we uh, were trading over the 200 SMA, you know, consec for more than one consecutive days is going all the way back here to June, July, right? So June, July, so we're talking about eight, nine months. So the last time we were over all of this supply was eight or nine months ago, guys. That's been a long time. Uh, let's kind of look at the VIX really quick, kind of see what the old VIX is doing. So if we look at the VIX today, big, nasty red candle on the VIX. 
Now, VIX is currently trading at $17.87, okay? We, we did break the lower channel level here on the VIX. We have been declining on the VIX for the past month and a half, two months. I would expect a little bit of a pullback, okay? I would expect a little bit of a pullback in tech. Not to say that we're gonna make a new low, okay? And if that happens, we'll be ready for it this time, right? We're not gonna be having our blinders on. We will be ready. But what I do kind of want to stress is that the market does need a pullback. It does need to rest. It does need to consolidate. So please, if you are a trader, make sure that you're on the right side of the trade. Do not get too overzealous and over happy now trying to chase all these stocks 30, 40, 50 points up. Instead, let them consolidate, let them start to back test, and then we can kind of catch those shorts into that strong support and then we can rebounce them to make new highs i hope this video makes sense hope you guys enjoy the content make sure if you guys do want to trade with me you guys want to learn how to trade these markets whether you're trading stocks you're trading options you're trading futures we've got something for everyone join the discord that link is down in the description box below also make sure to like comment share subscribe show your grandma show your mama do who, whatever you got to do to get this video out to more people been working like a madman on my videos lately and the content so i hope you guys really appreciate it i reshot this video actually because the last video i had two mics set up at the same time there was a heavy echo you know bear with me guys i've got all this stuff going on in here um but I'll see you guys all tomorrow. I'll probably be jumping on a intraday live tomorrow. So we're going to go over, we're going to trade the markets. I might be doing trade a little futures tomorrow and see how that goes. Um, I do have some overnight runners on Tesla, NVIDIA and Amazon, right? Let's actually look at Amazon really quick for anyone that is still watching this video. Uh, we're going to look at Amazon, Amazon right here. Beautiful move on Amazon. Um, I took this Amazon here on this consolidation of this three-day break here. So if you can kind of look at the 27th, look at the 30th, and look at the 31st, look at the highs and look how it's correlating with this downward trend. My entry on that was going to be over that 103 and a half mark, currently traded up to highs of 105.86. So currently holding some runners here on Amazon. Would look for a day two, day three continuation on this breakout of this channel. Uh, my price target is going to be 110. I will continue to scale my position and take some profits, but my overall price target before we have some sort of healthy pullback, if the market doesn't decide to go before I, I reach my price target, I'm looking at 110 and 112. Hope this video helps you guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.